Hello and welcome to this video. This is part of the TBS Crossfire series. Now I've done quite a few things with TBS Crossfire explaining what it is and how you use it. But one of the things I've had quite a few requests about is how you use the Mavlink feature. Now, for those of you that don't know what the Crossfire is, I recommend go and have a look at those videos that I talk about this. But in here, particularly the full size one, which is what this is, there's an awful lot of technology about something called Mavlink. Now, Mavlink is a telemetry protocol that's been around for a very long time. If you play with Pixhawk or APM or the Pixhawk 2.1, and in fact, we were using Mavlink to set up that big S900 build that we did a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that it's the way, that's the telemetry protocol that you can use to talk to the model to set everything up and monitor it. Now, interestingly, for those of you that know what Pixhawk is, You'll have seen these kind of things knocking around. I've done quite a bit on Pixhawk on the channel as well. The really cool thing is, is that if you are smart, you can actually get Pixhawk and Crossfire working really well together. So I've done this video to answer those questions that I've had and to talk about the options and also something that you can't do with Mavlink and Crossfire so that if you're a Pixhawk pilot or you're running APM or any flight controller actually that supports Mavlink, it'll show you some of the tips and tricks. Now I need to say a massive thank you to Remo at Team Black Sheep for technically vetting that this video is right. Um, I had to do an awful lot of testing and figuring out here to make this work because the documentation on this stuff isn't brilliant at all. There's a couple of YouTube videos with people kind of putting it together, but in terms of showing you what you have to do and the steps, it isn't great. So hopefully I'll make it a little bit clearer in this video. So enough of me banging on, let me jump into the slides and show you what the options are to control things like Pixhawk with a Crossfire system. So let's talk about the first and probably the most obvious way to connect up something like the Crossfire system to one of the Pixhawk family of flight controllers. And in fact, it's not just for Pixhawk, it could be for pretty much anything because you can configure out of the back of the Crossfire for one of the outputs to give you a traditional S bus signal. Now that means that you can plug that S bus signal into pretty much anything you want and including the Pixhawk. Now for something like a beta flight or a compatible flight controller that you have the latest and greatest version of technology on, you're probably going to use CRSF, the protocol developed by TBS, which is a lot faster than SBUS to talk to the flight controller. But for flight controllers like the Pixhawk, things like the Eagle Tree Vector and others that don't understand CRSF, you can always use SBUS or even PPM. So to use this method, which will pretty much work with everything, all you have to do is make sure that one of the outputs on the receiver is configured as SBUS, then connect that output, just like you would with any SBUS receiver, into the SBUS input on the flight controller. And in the Pixhawk, it's down here where it says RC in. Benefits of this is it's simple setup and pretty much everybody supports SBUS. The downside is is that you are not going to get your telemetry or other things back over SBUS. There is however another really cool way to send your RC control signals up into your Pixhawk and that is actually using Mavlink. So without anything plugged into the RC in I can move the sticks on the radio and they are all moving inside Mission Planner. And the way I've done that is very simple and straightforward. What I've done is configured two of the outputs on the Crossfire receiver as Mavlink Transmit and Mavlink Receive. If you set one up as Mavlink Transmit, it'll automatically configure the next one as Mavlink Receive. And then I've connected those to one of the telemetry ports on the Pixhawk. And the Pixhawk is listening on the telemetry ports by default. You don't have to do anything in the software to get this to work. The RC commands for throttle, elevator, and all that goodness is just going to be magically picked up. The only trick with this is to have the channels in a very particular order that the Pixhawk software is expecting it. I'm using Mission Planner here, so I'm having to use the aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder order, and then it all maps beautifully. What's actually happening here using Mavlink, though, is it isn't 
single direction. It's not just one directional, we're actually getting Mavlink telemetry back. Now that Mavlink telemetry is going into the radio so you can use it, but also with the big crossfire, you can have a Bluetooth connection and you can have that Mavlink telemetry information shoved out the side of the module on Bluetooth and you can connect to it with a tablet or a laptop or whatever it is at the field and you can actually connect by a Bluetooth to that stream and view it on either Mission Planner, Q Ground Control or whatever you're going to do. Again, as long as you've got the Bluetooth turned on, then you just in something like Q Ground Control, click on connection, click on Bluetooth and then away you go. And there you'll be able to view things like the craft's location, battery status, also be able to send it uh, commands on different flight modes and things like that as well. But for those of you that have played with Pixhawk quite a lot with traditional radio and telemetry radios, you'll do what I did, which is you'll look at this and you'll go, ah, that's brilliant. I can actually ditch the radio completely and I can fly via the Mavlink connection through the Crossfire because I can power that from my USB or an external battery and I can have it all happening over that as well so that I can fly everything from Mission Planner or Q Ground Control, I can plug in a PC joystick and I can make all that happen. Now that is possible, but unfortunately not with the current implementation of Mavlink and how the RC controls are encoded and handled through Crossfire. So unfortunately, you can't do that. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to invest in the 3DR telemetry radios. Again, I've got a whole video on that that talks about it. But if you're doing it over the telemetry radios, then you can do cool stuff like plug a PC joystick or joypad into a mission planner or a Q-Ground control powered laptop or tablet and then use that to send the controls to the model to fly. If I just put the slide that I think is probably most interesting for those of us who use Pixhawk is this one. I think that using the CRSF protocol and controlling it over the radio, but also being able to have a ground station screen wirelessly connected and showing all the Mavlink telemetry information is actually a blooming interesting way to do it. For those of us that fly a lot of Pixhawk, for those bigger craft that we want absolutely rock solid control on, we'll probably still use maybe Crossfire for control and then also have telemetry radios at the side. That gives a redundant radio link up to the model that allows you to control it via the radio or, or to control it over the 3DR radios, that telemetry link that we just talked about. So if something happens with the radio link, you've still got a way of controlling the vehicle. But for those of you that like to fly Pixhawk, and maybe you have been flying with traditional S-Bus receivers and considering getting the Mavlink telemetry back to monitor it during a flight, then this is a really cute way of doing it. And it's something that's kind of hidden away in the Crossfire. And as I said at the beginning, I think Crossfire is being used an awful lot for things like racing because of the very low latency of CRSF and the fantastic signals that you get using the lower frequencies of things like long range technology. But with the Mavlink stuff in this, it does mean that for Pixhawk pilots in particular, or any flight controller that talks Mavlink, this is a really cute way of getting a very low cost option and using the Crossfire system to get a much richer experience from those craft that have Pixhawk inside. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.